بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Thanks for being with us today and I feel very privileged to be able to speak about one of the brothers who are still in Guantanamo. I might not be the best person to speak about it. He has lawyers, he has family, but you know, as as a Someone that has been with Kate, someone that has been trying to um, assist um, some of those brothers, um, I've been tasked to, to do so. Um, Mohamed Rahim, uh, one of the reasons why we chose to speak about him is because he is the very last man to have been brought to Guantanamo. Um, after him, despite the you know, claims of Donald Trump, they would be loading Guantanamo with more bad dudes. No one have, to this day, no one has been brought to Guantanamo. Um, and he is also, he has the, the dubious honor of being the last man to have been put through the uh, infamous CIA torture program, the Enhanced Interrogation uh, Program. Um, and we'll go through um, his life, his condition, and we'll try to get a glimpse of um, who he is as a, as a person. Um, Forty people are remaining in Guantanamo. They are buried. It will be difficult for, for most of us to, to name even a handful of them, uh, even more so to know what they, what they look like. So today, that's what we're going to try to do, inshallah. So as you can guess from his name, uh, Mohamed Rahim uh, was born in Afghanistan, in the region of Jalalabad. Um, that's uh, obviously an old picture. Um, he um, later on, uh, around the age of 12, with his family, moved um, to Pakistan as a refugee. Uh, like many Afghans, he was forced to live a, a, a life of, of, uh, of, of a refugee, uh, growing up in, 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 uh, in such conditions. Uh, around the age of 16 or, or 17, he responded to a call. Um, he responded to a call which at the time was pushed by um, virtually all political institutions, religious institutions, and that indeed was supported by the West and the US uh, as well. Um, he chose to join uh, the Mujahideen, which were fighting and resisting the Soviet invasion. Um, so it's no secret that he did pick up arms, but at the time um, it was something which was not, not only embraced, but something that was encouraged and, and, and supported. Um, when the Soviets were forced and defeated and forced to leave uh, Afghanistan, he returned, he returned to his uh, civilian life and um, took up a number of, of, uh, of, of, of functions trying to <coughs> develop his country and, and, and give the, the, the rights and the glory that the country deserves. One of, his, uh, of the examples of, of this is that he became the financial officer for the um, anti-drug program in, in, in Nangahar, which was at the time uh, supported by the United Nations. So you can see how some people at one point were um, held as heroes, so people that had kicked out the communists and the Soviets, people were uh, seen as the as the future of Afghanistan, um, but this uh, took a turn in, in 2007. Um, in 2007, this is Mohammed Rahim. In 2007, uh, Mohammed Rahim was kidnapped on a bus in Lahore, Pakistan, uh, in front of his wife and, and children, um, taken to a secret loca location with his wife and children, and disappeared. Um, hours later, his, his uh, wife and kids were released, dropped in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but as for Mohammed, he disappeared in the uh, network of uh, secret CIA uh, torture centers. Um, and for the next eight months, he was subjected to um, things that we probably will never know about. Um, for eight months, what we, we only have a, a glimpse of what happened in these secret prisons. Uh, we know that he was subjected to beating, starvation, 
uh, human experiment, etc., etc. Um, and suddenly, uh, eight months later, he reappeared in Guantanamo. And this is where this picture was uh, taken. And as far as I know, that's the first known picture of uh, uh, Mohamed Rahim uh, after his in, in Guantanamo. Um, since then, he spent um, nearly a decade in Camp 7, which is the most secretive and the most guarded camp in, in, in Guantanamo. He's been classified as a high-value detainee. So people whom uh, the, uh, the US have said that they will never relieve, re release them. Uh, he's been classified uh, not only as a high-value detainee, but also as a forever prisoner. The U.S. have decided that they will uh, never release him, even though they've also decided that they will never try him, that they will never put him in front of a court and charge him with a crime. Um, and this is how he's been um, living his life for the past decade. Um, just a, a few information that we know of, despite the pain, despite the... Uh, solitude despite the, despite the separation from his family. A few things that we got to know um, from, from his family and his brother in particular is that he tries to take advantage of his time despite the extremely harsh conditions he, he lives under. He has completed the memorization of the Quran in, in Guantanamo. He has memorized over a thousand hadith in Guantanamo. So this is something as well for us to reflect. Um, time is passing. And time is passing fast. And what are we doing? What are, what are we doing for them? What are we doing for ourselves? Um, so you can, you know, you might think, okay, this is my words, this is the words of his family. Um, but what I would like to, to do is share some words from uh, this man who uh, is part of the Guantanamo craziness. But even though there is no case against Mohammed Rahim, even though there is no crime that is being charged with, he's been given a military lawyer, someone from the US military to represent his interests. Okay? Um, so this is his former military lawyer. And uh, we conducted an interview that you can check on the website. And this is what he had to say about Mohammed. He said, Mohammed Rahim is one of the most intelligent and personable men I've ever met. He's genu genuinely friendly and has a rare sense of humor that keeps me smiling throughout, throughout our meetings. In fact, I am consistently impressed by Mohammed Rahim's ability to maintain a positive attitude in such a hostile and uncomfortable environment. It is a testament to his faith and his strength of character. This is the word pronounced by a, a, a US serviceman, someone who has been deployed to, to uh, places of conflict, someone whose mission uh, was to fight uh, men like Mohamed Rahim. Yet, that's the impression that is left, that Mohamed Rahim has left, even on, 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 on this man. So you can see, um, we've seen one of the guards earlier, and there are other guards that actually embrace Islam um, at the hands of the detainees. And so, one lesson for us is that wherever we are, and wherever they are, they are a force for good, and they are a force for uh, being an example for the people that are meant to be um, on the other side. Um, <coughs> so, very rapidly, Mohamed Rahim, I've mentioned, is not charged with any crime. Actually, the US government have stated that they will not charge him with a crime. It's a decision that has been made. There is no piece of legislation that is applying to Mohammed Rahim. No international law, no US law, and no law whatsoever. Yet you will find that anyone that goes to Guantanamo, whether a lawyer or a journalist, or um, any other member of the public, or a, 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 a military serviceman, uh, is informed and warned before he goes to Guantanamo that in, Guantan in Guantanamo, there are, on the island, there are iguanas, and they are a protected species. And if you were to harm them uh, in any way, shape or form, you will be f fined and potentially be imprisoned. 
yet you have men like Muhammad Rahim who have been harmed um, heavily, have been tortured in ways that we cannot imagine. And there is no law or no government which is willing to punish those that have done this. Um, one of the reasons why I've, I've, uh, I wanted to show you um, these pictures is for you to um, know the face of Muhammad Rahim. And um, one thing that you will notice on all those pictures is this smile. And we should not be mistaken that it doesn't mean that there is no pain. It doesn't mean that there is no, uh, there's no uh, crying from the separation with, with their family. But we need to understand that among them are men who are examples, are men with character is actually examples for the guards, examples for their military lawyers. And this is something that uh, we really need to um, remember um, and understand that, you know, Mahmoud Rahim has been labeled a forever prisoner, but I think we really need to think about uh, this, this uh, label. Um, you know, it's as if, uh, you know, the people that decided that he was a forever prisoner knew Al Ghaib, they knew the unseen. They will never ever be released. And uh, you can say that this is something that probably was uh, said by Nelson Mandela, that this man will never be released. And actually, currently, um, the US government is negotiating with the Taliban. People that they said they will never negotiate with, yet they are negotiating with them. So um, I don't like to call them for prisoners. They're prisoners for now, and tomorrow they might be the. the the future of, of, of their country and the people that um, other governments are sitting with um, as, as, as leaders of the country. Um, I will just leave you with the, uh, two things. Number one is this kindness of Muhammad Rahim is something that I've experienced myself on, on a small level. Um, through our work, we had the chance to interact with his family and his lawyers, and sometimes we had the chance to uh, answer some of their requests uh, by sending small items um, that they are in, in, in need uh, that has to go through an extensive vetting process. Okay, so we, for example, you know, he requested from us um, green tea, roh uh, afza, the drink, and, 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 and similar items. Um, and there's something that through the lawyers, through the Red Cross, we and the family, we managed to, to send. And um, in his kindness, he insisted that he would send us a gift as well. He insisted that he would send us a gift as well. Now, you need to remember that Guantanamo is a place where a toothbrush is a, is a, is a, is a, is a luxury. So he decided to send us this pair of glasses. It's probably one of the few things that he had. Uh, and he took it and sent it to us as a gift. So we need to understand that, you know, the kind of spirit that those men have. <coughs> and lastly, I will leave you with these words that Muhammad Rahim himself wrote in, in one of his letters. He said, um, how do I get out of here? I'm innocent and I was tortured, hung from the ceiling until I was dead. I am not high value. They call me high value because they tortured me. How do we undo this injustice? Thank you very much. <laughs>